All right, I'm back, and uh, I have a book with me that's not Schelling or Kant. Uh, it's Fichte's, or Johann Gottlieb Fichte's Foundations of the Entire Wissenschaftslehre and the Related Writings, so his, his masterpiece, the, sign, the Science of Knowledge, um, translated and edited by Daniel Brizel. This is um, a wonderful translation, and Brizel has put um, so much time and energy into translating and finally getting a nice, precise um, work that we have now of Fichte. And interestingly, the old Heath edition, which I used quite a lot, uh, is now no longer the, the edition that scholars are using when they read Fichte's main work, which is right here. So today I thought I would switch it up a bit. Um, now you know the text that we're using. Um, this was pretty pricey. I think this was um, 120 USD. And there is a paperback version of it out right now that's only um, 30 USD. So. Um, that's good to have these great texts um, available to the public and for us to be able to read. So I thought that I would go over um, a brief outline of Fichte's um, Wissenschaftslehre, or his, his science of knowledge in this time from 1794 to 1795. And I thought I would um, essentially go over the, the main three principles so I have a, a, a kind of written, brief introduction to Fichte. So if you're interested in reading uh, Fichte's work, um, I hope this video will help you um, dive into the text, um, get into the nitty gritty of, of this beautiful text. Um, of course, Fichte is a very important thinker when it comes to uh, classical German philosophy and German idealism. I would say he's probably the father um, of post-Kantian philosophy. Um, both Schelling and Hegel and Holderlin were, in, were influenced by Fichte, either both positively or negatively. Um, of course, Holderlin was the one that, that influenced both Hegel and Schelling to move away from Fichte's philosophy. So it's a, so this is a, a rich um, thinker um, that um, I've noticed not a lot of videos um, are out on Fichte's philosophy. I know pessimistic um, idealism has uh, a, one or two videos on Fichte. I know um, my good friend uh, Matthew Siegel also has um, a video out on Fichte. But uh, I wanted to present a, a, an introduction to Fichte that once you watch this video, you could go pick up this daunting text. So it will, no, it will no longer be daunting to you. It'll be a text that you can just sink your teeth into and dive into. And, and that's the whole purpose of my channel, uh, The Young Idealist, is, is to promote and popularize all of these wonderful texts in classical German philosophy and German idealism. So let's, let's, let's dive into Fichte. So Fichte's Wissenschaftslehre. So we can imagine Fichte's philosophy as a logical extension of Kant's transcendental idealism, which then becomes a subjective idealism. What I'll focus on is Fichte's three principles in his science of knowledge. So Fichte begins with the first absolute, so sorry, Fichte begins his Wissenschaftslehre, or his science of knowledge, with the first absolutely unconditioned principle. This principle will be the foundation for the positing of the self. So Fichte begins by describing a simple logical judgment, A equals A, or A equals A. The reason why Fichte uses this logical proposition is because it remains self-evident and needs no demonstration. 
it means it needs no demonstration to anybody that can pick up this text to understand um, this proposition. So A equals A will simply mean both subject and predicate, S and P. However, there is a circular relationship between both these variables. A equals A is both the predicate of its subject and the subject of its own predicate. Here, Fichte is implying that there is a necessary relation between both the subject and the predicate. However, to further complicate these matters, the necessary relationship between them is determined by yet another principle. Let's call this principle x. So the initial first variable a is thus responsible for determining judgments. So Fichte explains that this principle x is in the self. And as the self gradually posits itself, the entire proposition a equals a, the subject and the predicate, move into the consciousness of the subject. They are posited in by the, they are posited by the subject, sorry. This leads us to bracket the entire proposition now. So x equals another bracket, a equals a. So, and it's, so this fundamental relationship is nothing more than I am I. Okay, that's very important. So this positing by the self is an expression of the self-reflexive nature of the self. So the notion of this self-reflexivity of the self is comparable to the Kantian notion of the transcendental unity of apperception. It is this basic nature of the I that allows for the possibility of judgments. So here's our first principle. So our first principle that we started with um, is that there is a absolutely unconditioned principle. Now we move to the second principle. So this leads us into the second Fichtean principle. And this is in scare quotes, the conditioned as to content. What arises in the second principle is the creation of a not self, right? At the first principle, we found the ground or the absolute ground of this and we were introduced to the ich, the I. Now we're introduced to the not self. So what arises in the second principle is the creation of the not self. So the absolute self produces a finite self and Fichte uses uh, the proposition again, but slightly different now, um, A, is not equal, sorry, the proposition not A equals A to express this process. So in this proposition, A does not equal not A, but both variables, and, and both variables are not the same. However, they are produced in the same consciousness. That's, that's a main point. So consciousness is able to posit that both A and not A have a fundamental identity to them. So this not self or not I threatens the self with the possible outcome of nullifying it. So there's the, there's the second principle. The third principle, um, this stage leads us to the third and final principle, conditioned as to form. This entire system, to Fichte, um, oddly enough, is working through Kant's category of quality. So the first stage, the positing of the I, which starts off with reality, or the reality of the self, 
um, and that that's the first movement, is then it's then negated by the not self, and there's our process of negation, and yet finally ends up in the limitations of experience. So now we have this element of of positing, negation, and limitation. So Fichte begins by asking the question of how we can attain a synthesis that preserves the self with the nullifying principle of the not-self. And his solution is to posit yet another principle. This principle is why. And this principle Y is what synthesizes the principle X. So the new principle, the new principle Y maintains the field of tension between X and Y inside of consciousness, right? So this entire process is meant to exemplify how consciousness produces the world outside of its own essence. The world, according to Fichte then, is nothing but the mind presenting the world's unity to itself. So I hope this, this brief and short and concise um, adaptation of the three principles in Fichte's Wissenschaftlehrer helps you um, you know, pick up the book yourself, but pick up the text because it's a wonderful text and it should be read a lot more. And thank you very much.